dash cam industry be about Russia? From once in a lifetime meteor strikes that they've captured to once in a lifetime near misses on Russian roads that seem to happen constantly. That's the backbone of YouTube, I think. Here in the US, though, we haven't really cared about dash cams. You almost never see one around here. Maybe if you're an Uber or a Lyft driver. So they blame everything but in why life you on an email for town car. Good luck. But otherwise, they're kind of odd and rare, but I think that's changing. My inbox has been jammed lately with questions about dash cams, and I think it's time to survey the landscape so you know what they're all about before you head out and buy one. Okay, here's a good example of a basic dash cam on the market today. This is kind of like the cost of admission in the industry. For just 40 bucks list, and you'll pay less than that street, this is from Extreme Cables. This is called the XDCD 1003. Kind of a small little guy. Frankly, its suction mount is bigger than the camera. It weighs nothing. A two inch LCD on the back, 1080p recording, audio as well, of course, though that is switchable. 32 gigabyte card capacity, though you have to bring your own card. That's a lot of recording. When it does fill, it records over the oldest clip first. It also has bumper collision detection. So if you get into an impact, its sensors detect that and it will lock down the clip of that moment so it never gets overwritten. So you definitely have it for later. This is a good example of the state of the art entry level point in the biz. Now our next camera is what I would call premium basic. Still a pretty basic camera, but this is something you didn't see until very recently. A dash cam from a name brand. Pioneer in this case. Kenwood has one also. Notice the shape or the form factor is a little different. No suction cup with a gooseneck hanging down. This guy's a little more, a little more elegant. It sticks to your windshield here and not unlike the factory cameras that are used for driver assistance systems. So it should look a little more OEM. Then of course your lens tilts here to accommodate the different angles of windshields. Again, a two inch LCD screen on the back, 1080p recording with video, overwrites the oldest clip, and it also has that bump detection, there you heard it, to detect if there's a collision and lock that clip down. This one also has a parking mode. That means it'll be surveilling at night. And if something happens to your car, even while it's off, this guy's on standby and will record if someone's screwing with your car, if it detects a bump or something. Also built in here is GPS, which our previous model didn't have. Now the price here, of course, as you notice, is significantly higher, partly for more features, partly because of a brand name. The Kenwood DRV N520 is interesting. It's $200, but it's actually more of an accessory than a standalone dash cam. It connects to a Kenwood double din head unit to operate. Doesn't work on its own. Okay, with the Vantru N2 Pro, we're entering into the dual camera range here. You've got one in the front that can do up to 1440 resolution. That's higher than most cameras. Or you can also run it in combination with the one on the back, which looks into the cabin. And then they're both recording at 1080p. This one on the back also has four little infrared emitters, so it shoots infrared, which is good because the inside of a car tends to be a dark cave. This way that'll be illuminated while the front does its job up there with high dynamic range. You see it's more of a traditional mount, kind of a thing hanging on a sort of an unattractive suction mount, but a lot of folks think that the shape and the size of it is, is pretty cool looking. Now the screen on this guy is smaller than most because of its kind of tubular shape. They can only fit a one and a half inch LCD, which makes a big difference percentage wise when you're dropping down from the two inch monitors we just saw. Now the Thinkware F800 Pro is really starting to get into departure territory. Notice it has no screen. This guy mounts kind of like this. You've got this rotating lens here looking out. And then on the back, you've got this set of controls, but notice no LCD because you're going to use your Connected smartphone instead smartphone. for both seeing a live view as well as playing back clips. Now you may have seen that price a second ago and gulped. What's up with a $300 plus price tag on a dash cam? Well, this is much more than a dash cam. It starts with those features, then it adds smart camera functionality. This little camera here is able to look at the lane lines and give you a warning if you're drifting out of your lane or see what's in front of you and see if you're closing too fast on that car and give you a forward collision warning alert. So now we're getting into a dash cam that is also a driver assistance unit. It can also use cloud services to know where traffic cameras are and alert you before you blow through one. Now one other interesting wrinkle on this Thinkware camera, it also can do a dual camera function optionally, 
but you don't have a cabin camera, you add a rear of car camera. And that is done by this optional unit here that, as you can see, is very definitely cabled. That's a long wire. You've got a string neatly underneath your upholstery in your car. But once you do, this guy looks out the back of your car and gives you kind of the exact 180 of what's in the front of your car. And everything happens through this cable, video as well as power. If you really want a dash cam you can barely see, you might want to look at the Dried, a pending dash cam that is visually almost not there. But like some other advanced dash cams, it does offer tracking and geofencing because it does have a cloud connection. But there's no built-in screen. It's one of those that uses your smartphone for that. Now, the Owl Car Cam is very security and exigency focused on grabbing moments, whatever type they may be. But first, I want to show you how it installs. This is very unusual. You start by putting one of these sorts of cantilevered brackets in your car at the back of the dash and suction to the windshield. And then when this thing is kind of sitting up there in space, you magnetically mount the owl, sorry, that's backwards. You set it up like so, looking out of the car that way, facing you this way. As you can see, it's got a nice large screen on there as well. And this one obviously is also app-centric. The other end of this apparatus connects through an OBD2 connector primarily for power. This is an intelligent power source. So it'll draw power when the car is parked or turned off for a long time. But because it's tied into the car's data bus, it will never draw power to the point of exhausting the battery. It's smart enough to know that and turn itself off instead. This is one of the cameras that also has a 4G LTE connection built in. It allows you to cloud save, cloud share, and cloud view your clips. Now, OWL says this camera is optimized for four major uses. One, to capture accidents and things that happen outside your windshield. Another one is to capture break-ins when you're not around. Those are all pretty standard. Another one, they say, is it's a great way to record traffic stops. And it also can record whatever happens by you using its activation phrase, which is the very strange, OK, presto. I would prefer if it was configurable so I could change it to respond to, oh my god. Now, because this guy's got those connected services, the 4G LTE radio, there is a connection fee. After an introductory period, it's $10 a month. And, of course, the price that you pay up front. The Waylens Horizon can capture track runs or leisure drives with unique on-screen attributes for either. It's very much the enthusiast's choice. It includes car performance data embedded from an OBD2 dongle and a dedicated control button you can strap onto your wheel to mark the best segments as you're blazing around the track. I was unable to get our hands on one for our taping, but they talk a good game anyway about build quality. The Raven is an odd bird. It combines aspects of a head-up display, a connected car device with tracking, and a front and interior dash cam that you can inspect anywhere via live streaming over its 4G radio. Under 300 bucks to start, but you'll need to pay somewhere between $8 and $32 a month after a trial period to get all the connected features. One last option is to get a mirror that replaces or goes over your factory mirror and has a forward-looking camera. Now, I've not found any of these that run full-time with an overriding logic like a true dash cam, but at the push of a button, you can grab what's outside the car to the front at some number of minutes per clip that you set. Okay, some general tips once you decide to become a dash cam user. First of all, dress the cable. Don't have a power cable hanging down in your car for the rest of your life. That looks awful. Secondly, get a big SD card, cheapskate. Don't get a little one, because the more you've got on that card, the less likely your little steamroller to clip you want from a few weeks or a month ago. Third, think about audio. Some folks who forgot to got themselves into some pretty big trouble, and you don't want to follow in their footsteps. Some states are two-party recording states. That means both parties, or all parties, must give consent to be audio recorded. Other people in your car, friends, family, casual carpoolers might be a little upset if they didn't know you were eavesdropping on them. And know that dash cams cut both ways. If you have an accident, and you're out there exchanging information and the other guy looks at your car and says, huh, look at that, big old dash cam hanging down by the mirror. They're gonna know you've got evidence that might help them more than you. And I wouldn't get in the business of destroying it. A lot of you have emailed me asking why you have to jump through all these hoops to get a dash cam. Why don't the factories put them in new cars? I believe several things are going on here. First, a lack of interest by U.S. car buyers, though that seems to now be changing. An aversion to the legal minefield that could ensnare car makers when they start building in devices that largely do evidence gathering. 
avoiding another distracting device in cars with a screen and fiddly menus. Watchdogs are touchy about that these days. A lack of margin in a category where, as you've seen, the price expectation has been set in the aftermarket, somewhere between 30 and 300 bucks. That's small potatoes for car makers. And having more important things to do at a time when autonomy, electrification, and connectivity are all on automakers' plates. The nearest thing to a factory dash cam would be a track cam and performance data recorder like you can get built into some Corvettes, or the integral GoPro support available in some BMWs.